What does your family think about the new company? It's impossible to share every detail at this point. I mean, they, they think I'm unpredictable and I'm fine with that. I've surpassed my father's ability to make money and my mother's ability to connect with people. So that's all that's left of our relationship is them fretting about the sky falling and squashing the world because I'm moving too quickly and shaking it all. I know you don't need me to tell you this since you built Sniped up from concept yourself while I was gone, but I've heard people draw parallels between you and John. You both have big footprints in the realm of tech and venture capital. I look at Stoke, and I know he wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for his early rounds of serendipitous funding. If he didn't come from an affluent family in Silicon Valley that provided him unconditional support, or at least food, a bed, and a garbage tinkering. I'm not saying you absolutely needed to maintain a relationship with your parents, but if the sky really did fall, Ami and Abu would be the first ones there to dig you out. That might not be something to take so lightly. Yeah, but most people are simply pedestrian. They hold themselves and their values above others by saying that there's injustice when they've never lived or worked with the poorest people in the world who suffer the most firsthand, as, as you have, and by insisting that they're above average when they haven't personally built anything of value as, as, as I have. My parents are fine people, they're, but as static as the majority. No. Uh, look, I haven't burned the relationship. I'm having lunch with them in the next month. Your idea of needing a safety net is what I'm addressing. If I ever become bankrupt or, or go to jail, I'll... Learn more from it. You should know that better than anyone. It's been instances where you've nearly died or starved on the other side of the world that have made you inordinately strong and differentiated you. I'm not so strong a person, Mel. I've been lucky to reach the point where you and I can have this conversation. I'm not blinded by survivor bias and expecting profit or a positive outcome from every idea I fart and delegate. You and I have fired a lot of ideas, half of them awful. I'm not sure having millions to invest in funds would have changed that. Nick, <laughs> do you remember when we first met? Remember what an insufferable ass you were? I thought that you thought you could shit gold. I was baffled by other people finding it charming. Girls wanted to tear your clothes off, guys wanted to idolize you, and sometimes the other way around. I fell in love with you as well over time, and at some point it occurred to me that it didn't matter what you said, it's only how you said it. That's all ideas and execution are in this world. As long as you have a brand, somebody worships you, and you, you acknowledge their faith, you are God. The Melvin you see now is, is better than the Melvin that we both knew. I welcome hugely positive and hugely negative circumstances in my endeavors because I only have huge ones. And if the day comes that you fail? Whatever happens, regardless of how bad things get, I'll, I'll only be sharing the experience with somebody else who's already undergoing it. How does that? I call you Siddhartha, agent for seeking and fortune. Excuse me? I've changed too. The world is cruel to the poor and to the unforgiving. Having positive intentions, a chiseled work ethic, a passion to excel in is meaningless if you have a broken leg and a shit healthcare, or if you find yourself bankrupt and unemployed because you are dirty and have grown an utterly unruly beard that may help look like Bin Laden. All that potential would be lost, and the philanthropic vision you and John are directing your lives towards would dry up for, before you, all because pride got in your way. Refusing to hedge your bets when you go to the table can be powerful, and it's not always smart. <laughs> I don't remember Nick Shim ever being so rational.